Hello Deep Valley community, thank you for watching. I'm going to talk about accounting tricks and I'm going to talk about accelerated amortization. The company I'm using as an example is Netflix. Full disclosure, I do not have a position in Netflix. This is simply for discussion. It is not a short thesis. I do not recommend that you short the stock. This is simply for us to discuss certain accounting tricks the companies employ to uh, improve or manage their earnings. This is not an accounting um, uh, video. It, we're just discussing how companies employ certain tricks to improve the apparent profitability of the company. So a company can choose how it depreciates a certain amount of its um, of its uh, assets. So the slower the depreciation, the better its earnings. Now, I'll repeat that. So if a company depreciates its assets very quickly, it'll take a huge earning hit, but later its, its earnings will be stronger. And the reverse happens. If you depreciate it very, very slowly, your earnings will look strong now, but they will often tail off. Now, the example I wanted to show here is in the case of um, Netflix. So, on the 10K, this is the annual report for the end of 2016. Netflix amortizes its content library over a period of of six months to five years so this this kind of means let's say that um if you think about uh, one of the, uh, netflix biggest shows let's say house of cards they're saying that on average people will still they're still worth something to season one of house of cards so i don't think the season one house of cards is worth people watching it five years later, you know, um, but, you know, this is up for discussion. That's at the end of 2016. Then, at the end of 2017, they have now extended out their content library, and they say that it's worth an estimated of average of 10 years, according to its, its estimates of viewing pattern. So what it's saying essentially is that on average, its library could be worth 10 years. So they've depreciated it significantly slower, and this increases its illusion of earnings power. This is not um, this is fully acceptable. You know, it's 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 gap accounting. Uh, that's fine. You can you can do these kinds of things. Indeed, um, um, something like General Electric and and uh, Jack Welch did this for years, you know. Uh, so this is this is absolutely valid, and you know you can you can do this. I'm just putting a question mark on whether Netflix's earning power is as strong as we may be led to believe. So that was at the end of 2017. Um, this, of course, repeats at the end of 2018. And now you'd say, okay, Michael. Um, Netflix is such a followed company by everyone. If this was such a big deal, that everyone would have jumped on the bandwagon with this. And sometimes, you know, things happen for a long time and nobody really is raising any question marks. But now, at the end of 2019, the auditors, Ernest and Young, decided, hey, you know what? Um, as we're kind of going through auditing your, your, your reports, we believe that there is a critical matter. We believe that there's some kind of too much wiggle room in how the company chooses to amortize, amortize its content. And this is something that could be worthwhile watching. So this happened just now uh, at the end of uh, 2019 at the 10, um, on the 10K. So um, this is something of a series that I'll start with accountings. I hope that I've been able to simplify that enough so that uh, everyone can follow it. And as always,
please subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.